This game is perfect for teachers, tables, and kids everywhere. I've sold over 3,000 of these, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make them step by step. You'll learn how to cut the acrylic, cut the wood without any chipping, how I programmed it, and all the different tips and tricks I've learned after making so many of these. For context, before we start cutting, these are two separate maze designs. This is the one we'll be cutting out today, and this is the one I've actually sold over 3,000 of. And a few years ago, I put this on Etsy, I made it out of red oak scrap, and we started selling them. I've sold them at trade shows, and I have them currently in about five stores. There's a pretty crazy story behind this simple maze game that we're gonna talk about in a separate video, but for today, we'll make the new and improved version 4.0, which has handles, I think looks way better, is gonna take way better photographs, and honestly, it's just an overall better design. And the reason we're making it is because it is part of CIC Workshop's kit of the month, and so it is the kit of the month for August. What comes in the kit is a 12 inch by 16 inch piece of Bamex material, eighth inch acrylic, one foot by one foot, screws and hardware with the marble, and a surf prep rad pad so we can easily sand these little handles right here. And we're offering it to you guys for $24.99. So that is gonna be the kit of the month. And if you bought the kit, you should receive the digital file. And now you're watching this video to learn exactly how to do it. If you have not bought the kit, you're about to learn a lot of stuff about how to make these mazes yourself, whether you get the kit or not, totally okay with me. I just want you to get creating and building with your CNC. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll be cutting out for this maze game is this acrylic cover right here. So we'll be using the one foot by one foot eighth inch acrylic. It has paper backing. We'll tear that off later. Don't worry about it. So let's just get it held down, mark the center, and I'll talk about how to cut acrylic. The bit we'll be using to cut this acrylic is an eighth inch O-flute bit. The reason we're using an eighth inch O-flute is because it's the bit that you want when cutting any hard plastics or soft plastics. The chip ejection and the shear angle and all the geometry of the bit is just so much better for plastics than a typical two-flute upcut that you use for wood. The first tool path we'll be running is the holes for the acrylic, and then I'm gonna turn around and use those exact same holds for a better hold down, because this acrylic is thin and a little bit flimsy, so the closer you can get the hold down to the cutting edge, the better. So this is the digital file that you'll need to make the maze game you should have received. It's also available in Carbite Create as well. At the top of the digital file, it will have the bits we're using as well as recommended feed rates and plunge rates. So the first thing we'll be doing is just simply drilling these holes, which is just a simple drill tool path going an eighth inch deep at 40 inches a minute and 20 on the plunge. So after we drill the holes, use the screws that came with the kit to actually go back here and hold down that acrylic. You definitely do not have to do this. You can use double-sided tape, use these clamps. I'm just trying to give you different ideas to have really secure hold down. So I'm gonna go back, put in all these screws, and then we'll do the outside profile on the acrylic. All right, got it screwed down. Let's cut out this acrylic. Let me show you what it looks like on the digital file. Then we'll hit go. After we cut out the holes, it'll be a profile outside on this line right here. And that's going to be running at 40 inches a minute, 20 inches on the plunge, and also cutting down an eighth of an inch in two passes. <laughs> So the machine we're using today is the Shapeoko 5 Pro, and whenever it's done with its tool pass, it actually lifts up and gets the heck out of your way, which is pretty cool. So then, we just take out those screws. They should not get hit. 
as long as you don't change the origin. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but once you peel back that paper on the acrylic, you're gonna have a nice like glass-like finish because of that O flute. And the reason we cut this out first is whenever we cut out this maze right here, and we want, to, we want to make sure that this acrylic is going to fit in the pocket. And it's a lot easier to make the pocket bigger than make the acrylic smaller once it's already cut. The next thing we'll be cutting is the Bamex. It should be a 12 by 16 inch piece of Bamex, still doing that center origin. And the first tool path is going to be a pocket. So this maze game acrylic can fit. Then we'll do the maze and then cut out everything. Just trust me on this process after doing thousands of them. This is the way it has to be done. And it also has to be done with a down cut finisher. You don't want to use an up cut on this because you're going to get a lot of chip out, a lot of bad edges. So just like on the acrylic where I highly advise to use an eighth inch O flute, it is pretty much mandatory to use some type of quarter inch down cut for this maze part. So if you want to get any of the bits, check them out on CSE Workshop if you don't already have some. So I'm going to get this bit chalked up in here and then we'll talk about the program and then start cutting. So for this pocket toolpath, we'll just be taking it down 0.155 inches with that quarter inch bit. And I'll be running it at a 70% step over, running it at 80 inches a minute, 40 on the plunge, and just a simple pocket is all you need. Should look like that. All right, we just got the pocket cut out. Your pocket should look nice and neat like this. The next thing you wanna do is peel back a little piece of paper on that acrylic and stick it in that pocket to make sure it fits. It may be a little snug because the frizzy's from the paper. And if it does fit, you're good. If it does not fit, make the pocket a little bit bigger and recut it. That's why we cut the acrylic first. And then I'm using that paper tab to get out the acrylic so it doesn't get lost forever in the pocket of misery. And I was running this at 80 inches a minute. I thought it was a little bit conservative. So by the end of it, I was running it at 140 inches a minute, cutting down that 0.155 inches. And it's really funny, before this video, I was doing some test cuts and my bit had a lot of chatter. So I called Shape Oko and uh, they, you know, they got back to me really quickly and they said, check all the bolts. And I went back and that gantry over there had a loose bolt in it or a loose uh, machine screw. So I tightened it up and the pocket is like 10 times better. So just make sure uh, you're not going nuts uh, when you're running your CNC. All right, the next thing we're gonna cut is the actual maze out. This is a lot of fun to cut, a lot of fun to watch. Same quarter inch down cut. Let me show you how it's programmed and let's start cutting. Now to cut out this maze game, it's just a simple pocket tool path with everything selected, and we're cutting down 0.45 inches. Now, since the top pocket already removed 0.15 inches, you can set pass number one a little bit deeper, and that way each pass is taking off the same amount, or you can have your start depth at 0.15 inches and your flat depth at 0.3 inches. Either one works, but for today, we're just going to run the cut depth at 0.45 inches, and then just edit the passes and set the depth of that first pass to 0.3 inches, just like that. So once this runs, it'll cut everything out and you'll end up with a beautiful maze game pocket just like that. All right, time to cut the trenches, baby. Let's go. So I just finished those pockets up and honestly that's like my favorite part of cutting out a maze game. If you do notice though, if you go in there and look really closely, there may be a few fuzzies. Just go in there with a knife and cut them out. There should just be a couple of fuzzies. Now with this Bamex, this is the best material that I have found to cut maze games with. And so there shouldn't be many fuzzies in there like that. 
And why I included this Surf Prep Rad Pad, is what they call it, um, we use this in the shop on our sanding table. And the reason for that is whenever you're sanding this stuff, you know, if you had sandpaper, it's gonna tear up your hands. And so this little, nice little sponge thing here that's included, you can go like this and it'll get off a lot of those tiny little fuzzies that are on top. And then later on, we'll use it for right here on the handles. And uh, it's just nice. So they're kind enough to throw these in each box. So definitely give a little shout out to them and thank them. The next thing we're going to cut out are the handle holes. I like doing those before this outside profile because you need really good hold down because these kind of suck to sand. Now, if you were one of the hundreds of people that bought our very first CIC workshop kit that came out in July, leave a comment down below with the word freedom and let me know if you liked it, disliked it, what I should change, what other kit ideas you have because we're going to keep this a monthly thing so y'all guys keep creating with your CNC. Now it's time to cut out these handles. So we'll be using toolpath number five, doing a profile inside the line with a couple tabs. And if you use Carbite Create, I have those tabs set up for you in there as well. So we'll be running four passes, cutting 0.76 inches deep. The tabs are a quarter inch long and a 16th of an inch thick, and we'll be using a half inch ramp. Once cut out, they look like that. And the last tool path is number six, profile outside the line. And we'll be cutting out the full entire maze game with four tabs the same size as the ones on the handle. And with that last tool path, we have successfully cut out the maze. So we got it fully cut out. Here are the spots I put the tabs, if you did not see that in the digital file. So I put two on each piece of the handle and then one on each of these corners. And they should break out quite easily. For the hardness of this Bamex, it's about the equivalent of hard maple. So it is pretty tough, pretty hard. So watch out when you're breaking these tabs so you don't just make it like, make it mess up the back of your maze game, right? All right, so we got the maze game cut out. After it's cut out, I do recommend going in there and putting a little dot on the top left and the bottom right corners as like a little start and finish. In the shop, we use a 3 16 round over to sand everything. You don't have to use a round over bit. You can just take it, sand it down as is. And for a finish, we use a mineral oil. And so we just dip it in a vat of mineral oil, hang it up to dry. I found it to be the easiest, but if you want to spray, you can do that as well. I do not recommend like wipe on finishes because it's impossible to get it out of all these cracks and crevices. Now, whenever you're putting on the acrylic, it should fit in there and there should be a little bit of wiggle room. I did that on purpose for expansion and contraction. You're fine there. The next thing is going to be the screws. Now I didn't have the CNC pre-drill the screws because an eighth inch hole is a little bit too big though I definitely recommend you pre-drill the holes before you put in the screws as you don't want to have any splitting or any chip out or anything like that. Once you do all that, it should look like this and it should be absolutely beautiful. And included in this kit is the commercial license to sell these maze games. And so if you wanna go out and sell this exact maze game or use a digital file that you got included with it and go out and sell them, make your own, that's perfectly fine because I just want you guys using your CNC's. I don't care which one you have, I just want you using them. So this is the maze game that has brought me a lot of success. I hope it brings you a lot of happiness and success as well. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And if you do make this maze game, definitely post it in our Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.